and we can continue with our conversations. And um, I was wondering if you could tell me about you. When did you come to mind? When did I come to mind? March of 2018. Okay. And what? I lost my first YouTube channel. It was a pretty big channel. And I had spoken the word of someone you couldn't speak. Mm. It was at the uh, shooting in Florida. And the guys on mines, it's not real David Hogg, but David Hogg, his cousin, and another person that were talking in public about things. We, anybody that said anything about them, got their channel taken down for abuse of young children of some stupid thing wow he was over 18. I, I just couldn't believe it so that channel died and mines began i had a second channel that's that's what we use for our live streams it's got about sixteen thousand subscribers now nothing big mm -hmm. and it's lost subscribers because i'm not there much but now i put the videos up there but that's what put me on mines i i were, was watching uh James Corbett, oh. the Corbett Report, who is now off YouTube and said that it would happen someday. And he had this video one day about all the alternatives to YouTube. And I was so angry with YouTube. I had started a new channel, but I was just disgusted. And he was mentioning all these websites and he was talking so highly about mines. So I signed up. Oh, interesting. And what was your impression of Mines when you first got to Mines? Oh, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, Lady Hug was there then. Almost instantly I ran into her. But I ran into, at the very beginning, the most brilliant people. And I thought, how appropriate that this place is called Mines because oh, some of the people I was talking some of the first ones were talking about different ways of seeing reality and um, different ways of thinking and artists, writers. Oh gosh, what else attracted me in the beginning? For the most part, that was it. But it seemed like everybody I hit in the early stages was writers. Eric Marr. Um, well, I can't think of all the names now. Uh, Badass Rogue. She goes by Don't. Don't sleep, I think, now. Right, yes. Um, there's a couple of other ones. Oh, there's... I always forget his name, but he does the best captioning. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Robert Van Dusen. Robert Van Dusen. He's Those were the kind of people I hit early on. These yes. brilliant people that are already... Some of them are already publishing... Hmm. Uh, and early on, I ran into people that were artists. Uh, Sandy Baker, artist, she's one of the beautiful, she draws colors on anything. That just really amazes me. And there's people that work with jewelry, but it was the, the intellect that got me and the honesty that the people that were just so, you didn't have to cover up who you were as much. You could say what you wanted on mine. So you didn't have to, you know, on Facebook, it was already starting to get, you would get your channel warning or you'd get a thing underneath your channel. YouTube was knocking other channels down left and right. And then I came to Minds, and it's free thinking, free speaking, so refreshing. What a change. And I thought how small it was, and it's still small, but when we think back how, I don't know, when you came, I think you came earlier than me, uh, it's grown. Possibly a few months, not not materially earlier, yeah. Yeah, just a few months. Most people I know came around that same time. There's a few newer ones, but a lot of them, I still am in touch with the old ones. The first ones I met, Eric Marr, mm. I think I met Russia Waves early on. Willie, mm. a lot of them are still there. A lot of them. They were Lady a lot Red. Of meme lords, weren't they? Meme. Oh yeah, the meme lords, and there was a. What's that? Official minds gifts. Official gifts. Yes, yes, yes. And Red Dragon, I think Red Dragon is the one that. Yes. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. big. Yeah. And they. Yeah, and there were quite a few gamers. 
Yeah, a lot of gamers. And I, one of our knights is a gamer. Oh, he is? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've had chats with some of the, the Minds people about gaming. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the one that's on the radio show, um, what does he call himself? Fox News. He's a gamer. Oh, he is. And, he is. Yeah, and I think Yo Rizzo is too, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's hardcore, I think. Yeah, I've watched him stream on YouTube. Don't know if he's still on YouTube. I think he maybe moved on to some of the others, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah. And I know that censorship sucks was he and I uh, swapped notes on World of Warcraft. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Justin plays StarCraft. That's a game he likes a lot. Yeah. Yes. that's. It's those, those games, I think, that helped him develop those brains they have. Justin's always telling me that. He says, Mom, you should play video games. They've done studies how, how it makes you faster reacting time it helps you not uh, succumb to dementia mm -hmm. keeps your mind active and he's like you should play <laughs> so i could play things like angry birds and he did uh plants versus zombies we played some of those but then he tried to get me to play mass effect oh. i love watching him play mass effect and it's one of those cerebral games Another one of those general kind of top-down point of view looking. Put that darn controller in my hands. Or, <laughs> a rack mom built a game. Dang. I didn't know that. Willie Lee told me. I think I've been there, but it was, yeah, I, I think he said that um, there's a game called Star Shatter. I'll be tired. Yeah. And I said to him, like, when did you do, when did you build the game? And he said, oh, yeah, no, that was when I should have been writing my books. But I was. <laughs> so from what I understood, okay, and, and, and like I, I, I still got so much to learn. But from what I understood is he came up with the idea of the books and wrote the outline of them, then got distracted, if you like, and built a game, built a game. And then later on came back to the books and he hmm. gave me, I think, he gave me the first book as a prize in one of his competitions that he ran. Hmm. Now that was something of his I didn't know anything about because early on I would touch base with him a little bit. The way we mostly touch base was in the old messenger. Right. I I didn't go to his page all that much. And he even tried to convince me about his books. But all I cared about at the time was how friendly he was. He was so, even from the beginning, when he was having his struggles, writing his book, he was always encouraging me. Mm. Oh, all that time ago. And now here we are, how many years later? Almost four years later. I've read four, no, I've read almost five of the books oh, i still really? can't i'm having a terrible time reading i don't know i have to be outside to be able to read and not be distracted uh, everything in my house distracts me mm -hmm. but with everything outside all the birds all the noise something about it just i can get in the frame of mind to read and it's just been hot and i've been busy and and then when I try to read anywhere else, the book is sitting like I just can't read it. I can read a page or two. And I know he, that just bothers him to pieces that I can't read right now because he's like, do you want me to read for you? And he's done that a couple of times. Oh, really? He has a, yeah, he, he sat one morning and read to me for two hours, two chapters out of his book. Another time he sat and read at least a chapter. And he's got other people that are just lining up. If you, you need me to read, I'll read him. Wow. But I've been, I've been so busy. I, I'd love to have somebody read to me, but it takes time. And wow, the way life has been lately. It's, it's I, I turn around and another week went by. And I, I have so many things I want to read. It's, <laughs> it's frustrating. So many hours a day. And, yes. This Victor Frankl book, I've already read it before, but you know how you opened your book up the other day on grieving? I opened mine up. So funny, it was about 
uh, he was talking to a, a couple of people in the hospital and it's a therapeutic group like you know we've both been in something like that yes. and I have to tell you about it it's so funny he was talking about this discussion group that he had and he asked a woman how old she was and she said she was 30 and he told her no you're not 30 you're 80 and you're on your deathbed looking back at your life a life childless but full of financial success and social prestige and then I invited her to imagine what she'd feel in this situation. So she comes up with this brilliant story. I was married to a millionaire, had an easy life, flirted, lived it up, teased with the men. I have no children now. I'm 80. And looking back as an old woman, I can't see what all that was for. I actually must say my life is a failure. So then he goes and asks another lady, and she's grieving because she had this young boy that died. I don't know how old, it doesn't say how old he was. But she had another son who was still alive. And she said that she felt like there was nothing left, that she just wanted to die. She wanted to take that other crippled boy and commit suicide. With both, you know, kill him and her. And the boy said, I don't want to die. I like living. So he asked her, okay, if you look at what she said and how her life was meaningless, can you find meaning in your own life? And she said, yes, after all, he's crippled and helpless, but he is my boy, and I've made a fuller life possible for him, and I've made a better human being out of my son. And then she said, this is what gets me. As for myself, I can look back peacefully on my life, for I can say my life was full of meaning. And I have tried hard to fulfill it. I have done my best. Remember us talking about that? Yeah. Just turn to this. I've done my best. I have done the best for my son. My life was no failure. Wow. Just opened up. Mm. Literally. Oh, there goes the They literally just opened up to that page. Mm. <laughs> and that was what we were talking about last week. Like doing the best you can. And... <laughs> Looking back at it, one girl imagining being old and the other one actually being at that age. Incredible. And that's where kind of I was at, you know? Like, uh, I wasn't to the point where I wanted to take anybody with me and I wasn't going to commit suicide, but I sure wasn't interested in keeping on going much. You know, I had just pretty much resigned myself to, eh, things are just going to get worse and things are going to fade and I'm going to die. Yes, it's interesting you how you can slip into that day. <laughs> And I think that's what's what's so incredible for Aragma, well, not for Aragma, but with his stories, is that he has created this entire new world where mm -hmm. there's problems and there's hardships, but but there's triumph and there's glory and there's victory and there's it doesn't make the bad things go away. If you were in his books, who would you be? Oh, wow. You know, he's asked me a few times yeah. what my favorite characters are. Uh, the funny thing is, I, I would probably go with one of the young married couples, Vasilisa. Oh, how she yeah. loves her, her husband. All right. And how, she, uh, yes. There's something about her love for him and her witchery. She talks about how... They have this skill, her race, and she only uses it for good. Yes. yes. And I think her being a very spiritual, I see that. She talks about being connected. Yes, yes, yes. But even, again, she's a married woman. I don't know why I draw to that one. But at the beginning, I was interested in Lily, the rabbit. Me too. Yeah. The one that caught me that indomitable spirit she was a watermelon well, watermelon farmer and, but they were trained because they had to be they were on the fringes and they had war everywhere they turned just trying to keep their little colony going and here she was her world being destroyed and man oh man one person single-handed all the people she killed and the trees the mumpa trees I just love those stories because those same things echoing the, but Lily, man, I, I love Vasilisa, but Lily, 
she's she's not married. She doesn't have her family's mostly destroyed, and she just loves awesome. And she's she's just that powerful spirit. That's mm. Mm. You know, I, I really need to go more with her than Vasilisa. Vasilisa has some of the characteristics that I have. That uh -huh. Lily, mm, Lily's what I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> the warrior. Yeah, she's a fierce little girl. And the other yeah. thing that's very sweet about Lily is that she's, I think it's her and Brynja, the Asgardian. Yes, she loves Brynja. That's yeah. the one she takes to heal. And he carries her. <laughs> so sweet. Who would your team be if you had to go to space now? Say, you know, like it, it, it's, it's, it's the end of the Earth. And we've got to get out of here. And who would you take? Okay, I know Justin and Lucas. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I could get a hold of them, mm -hmm. I'd have to take Eric Mar from my morale loss. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes. And for okay. nice. Oh, man. Who would be the I think the bears for me to say it, but Doc, uh, he goes by Reverend Holiday. Mm -hmm. he, he's an older guy, but he's he uses the uh, tombstone that make my day kind of old fashioned cowboy. Yeah. There's something about his character that just draws me to those ones that just will only take so much and then watch mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Wild West Cowboys. And then authentic antique arms, you know, because he's already building. Mm. I would definitely take someone like him. I'd be bringing along women like you that would be um, somebody to, to build, uh, not morale, but the ones that are there to come back to, you know, the ones that, that's probably what I would be in space. I'd be the, you know, the thing about Lost in Space the other day, I put that up because mine's was just a mess that day, and I put up Lost in Space. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. What if you were out there, like you were saying, in the middle of nowhere, Who, like what would be important to you? Who would be the ones you would take with you? And it would have to be the same people that I talk to every day, yeah. like you, the the other one that's been in the pain, the prayer, the one that prays every day. Yeah. I'd have to have the support people that would keep our spirits up as well as the fighters. Yeah. I'd, as many of them as I would have fighters, probably. And it's funny because in the real rigors of space, I probably wouldn't even do that well. <laughs> Do you think that there would be other, I mean, if we went to space, if we went to the moon, if we went to Mars, do you think that it's possible, okay, I know you said earlier about how we are on Earth and we do accept our reality, but just going into the fantasy and following along with the idea. Do oh, you, I think of it all the time. Do you think there, that we would meet other people like us? Mm -hmm. I do. Remember when I was talking about C.S. Lewis, how I love that idea of the jumping in a pond and ended up in a new realm? I I, I kind of see the new heaven, the new earth is, is a possibility thing that you could just go wherever you wanted to. And I, I think about that. Look, are we the only thing out there? Yeah. And I know we're not because I know there's angels. There's different kinds of angels. Truth. Yes. So why, why would be we be the only creation? I know in the Bible it talks, Jesus says, I have sheep of other pastures. Yeah. I can't help but wonder what all could be. And I, I sometimes think of us, what, the reason why I thought of that firm thing of, as a prison planet, I've heard that so many times. Mm -hmm. Prison planet, Alex Jones, you know. But I've heard that before. And I think even if it isn't, we're stuck you know, these old ones of us probably aren't going to be going out into space. Our bodies aren't capable of taking the kind of thing that it takes to be one of those explorers. But someday, I think it'll be however it happens. I think there are other things out there, other beings out there. Mm. Even if there aren't 
think about all the people that have already died and gone to heaven, all the different races of people and backgrounds. To meet Abraham would be so cool. Talk about, Abraham wasn't a Christian. He was some guy that lived in one of those places, probably Babylon area, Ur. Yeah. Ur. Uh, ancient civil, so it was before Babylon, ancient civilization, but it didn't have anything to do with God. But God called him from that place into something new. Isn't that something? Isn't and they talk about the Bible being so old and out of date. Mm -hmm. But the old does happen to go away all the time. Here's my clues that are different. Mm -hmm. I read a book, um, He Walked the Americas, about... Um, someone that said Jesus actually went to South America okay. and was seen by them. So why do we have to limit everything to just being this earth? I don't think it's the only thing. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more, but I don't know if I'll ever see it. But these younger guys, boy, they're... But in a way, in a way, I just thought of this while you were talking, and it's kind of weird, but in a way, minds is like a spaceship, and we're almost as if we are a crew. I'm, I'm thinking of the beginning of Aragma's books, that the very, very first one, the, the Star Shatter. Uh, oh, he was each, crew. Yeah. And each character is introduced carefully in its own chapter, and then right at the end, they all get together. And I sort of mm -hmm. think of that in, in, in minds. We all jump on here and we kind of make our channel and learn how the, the system works and and try to try to get a, a, a personality for our channel. But part mm -hmm. of that is linking to the other channels that do the things that you don't do. Yep. And what you've been saying about the dark nights and explaining to me about the dark nights, it's it's almost as if they are the one. I don't know. What are, are they? The captain and crew? Are we the passengers? How is this working? It does seem like a crew building experience, doesn't it? When you t when you think about these big corporations that have their team building. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's kind of funny, like we said last week about mine still staying small, even though it's growing yes. compared to these other places. It's like this little little gym over in its little corner doing its own thing and it's a kind of protected little environment it seems like but it does seem like a crew building exercise i remember watching this tv series it was a mini series and it was i think it was called ascension it was about this bunch of people that thought they were actually going to space but they weren't they were just in this mock-up spaceship that had all the feel space everything as far as they knew, it was real. Right. And these people that thought of this idea were just watching the experiment. It was generations in. And they're seeing changes in the children. And they're like, we were trying to just do this to see what it would be like to be out in space. But what ha actually happened is they were seeing children grow into something that humans hadn't been before. They could... They could visualize things and they would happen and it wasn't anything like what they expected. So minds kind of makes me think of that. You know, it's like this little experiment and some people know that it's real and other people are like, well, you know, this is this little imaginary world, but we're creating something. It's amazing when you think about it. We have our dark nights and dark beauties. Other people are game creators of one of my dark nights that we haven't mentioned names, he's a game creator. Mm -hmm. Another one, a, a very creative person. And I ran into all these people that are writers. And funny thing is, I used to want to be a writer. Okay. And I can write short blurbs. If I do ever write anything, it'll probably be a collection of little things. But these men out there are writing novels and decalogues and making video games and oh my gosh they're so creative so I'm seeing in them things that I want to do and can't mm -hmm. 
and it, it's a real draw to see what what's creating these these groups and a lot of them are like us they're visionaries but they're seeing it through an author's eyes or a gunsmith like it's so funny and we have these wild west cowboys and and i think of the people that that Eridmar comes up with this ape that's called cat of all things and when you see her name you think of a cat but she's this great big ape and all these different people that come together are awesome the the hamster you know yeah it's and we have people like that in our group. There's guys that are so funny. The one you were talking to the other night that said, I'm not human. I'm a fake channel. <laughs> they're so funny. And they're so funny. The one, creative. I'm not a human. I am a shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think it says, I'm a fake account. <laughs> yes. The you were talking about creative people and how there's so so many creators and these extraordinary things that they really extraordinary some of the the thing that you see here i mean how many times do you get to chat with the a, a best selling author just hi how you you know that just anyway get focusing on what i'm saying there's so many creative people here but there's also on the other side these really really technical intense developers that are building this platform who are creating mm -hmm. in a different way not the sort of like photographs and and and, and there seems to be a lot of uh, for want of a better word conflict a lot of mm -hmm. interplay between the the people who are building the platform and the people who want to use the platform and mm -hmm. i know before that's really really um it's made, made me feel uncomfortable and I'm starting to understand now that it's part of the process. But mm -hmm. you've really seen it from the beginning. You've seen the uh, the interplay mm -hmm. between the developers and the users. What's your take on that? I used to see it from a different point of view because I'm a, more of a user. And watching this over time, especially the, the main two creators like I don't know what John's role is, but John is the one I see as like the father of the place, you know? And I see, even though he was the, the, the start, it's his son who took off with it. And when we look at these other channels that are so creative, I think of Chris Dugan and his 3D videos that he takes. And out in the rough, out in the water, they're out doing stuff, you know. I'm just sitting here in my little corner of the world. But while we're grandmas and looking at it in the high, you know, rear view mirror, these guys are out there. And, and watching it over the years, it's really been amazing. Because, like you said, there's tension, there's friction. And I think, uh, I know a lot of people don't like me referencing Bible verses, but I can't help thinking of the one, iron sharpens iron. When men get together, sparks fly. Wow. <laughs> They're creative. Yeah. And if you have somebody that's welding and a spark flies, it can start a forest fire. And I've seen people on mines that used to be super close to each other having these conflicts, and I'm thinking, what is going on here? And I used to see it in a kind of negative light, but I'm looking at it in a different way now. It's like these groups come together. They 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 help each other, hurt each other, whatever. But you leave that and you've got some experience under your belt and you move on. And sometimes you come back to these same people later and find out that they've grown like Rush of Waves. Now is Rush of Waves 2.0. Mm -hmm. So that. A lot of us are recreating ourselves from what we used to be. Mm -hmm. But then there's... The, the hard nose died in the wool, never gave up, keep plugging along ones there too. Yep. It's just so interesting watching it evolve. Yes. Again, that ascension idea, you know, what are we gonna create out of this? It's what it can be mind? so many things. Yes. And it is a wild west, isn't it? Oh boy, is it ever. 
It's the boys and the gunslingers and the gold and the cattle and the dust and the dirt and the lawlessness and the... It's, it's, we're watching it being built. Just like the Wild West, mm. down to the digging for gold. Because <laughs> you know there's some there that are mining for that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, and then I bought myself a guitar the other day, well, the other week little while back I bought myself a guitar and yeah. uh, every now and then I feel like it what would it have been like to be a cowboy at the end of the day and everything and you that's your entertainment you don't go home and 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 sit down and put your feet up and um, watch the TV you're like yeah. there all your cows are there and your horse is there and your fire is there and your entertainment is your guitar and we've come a long way okay. And cows moving, <laughs> but those guitars are still there. I still haven't bought one yet. I'm I'm debating on if I want to try that or if I want to go back to getting better on, on the piano. Oh. I used to be really good on the piano. I was so good in school that I was accompanying other kids at band contests. And I could do that. I could play anything. And it's been so many years since I've had. For a while, we had my husband's mom's piano. And before that, I had a baby grand. And we moved around so much that I had to give up on the baby. It just couldn't take being moved all the time. Mm -hmm. And I had my uh, mother-in-law's piano for a long time, too. Same thing with it, just moving it around so much. Mm -hmm. And then we got somewhere that we didn't have room for it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've had a keyboard before that I don't have anymore. And, I want, I've got a saxophone that I can play, but when you have the saxophone, you can't sing along. So I want something that I can. Yes. And I don't know if I want to try beginning with a guitar or if I want to go to something I already had. Mm -hmm. But I do want to get back to that because all the music that I want to, I found, found out that you can't do a lot of uh, even karaoke because there's rights to it. And if you put it up on the internet, they can take it down unless you have. But if you play your own music, there's nothing to take away. But I don't have anything to do it with right now. That I, yeah, I'm. I love my saxophone, but I'm not able like to do everything I want to do with it. I yes. just yes. There's always something I want to do that I can't do yet, and it's always a challenge. Do you want to learn something new? Well, once more, going back into the Bible, we're made in the image of God. He's the creator. We're made to create. And this channel that we're, this little show that we're, we're getting going here, we've talked a little bit about dark nights and dark beauties. We've talked a little bit about having babies and men and women getting together. We've talked about having guys come on the show, show the dark nights, come and talk to us about their things. And we've talked to different, uh, at different stages about people like Crimson, Capsule Kitty, and Lady Red, and maybe talking to them, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking what you were saying about how bringing people together. Could we have this platform, this show that we have, this little interaction that you and I are having? How would it be if we did this for people to learn about each other? Get the guys on to talk about guy stuff and get the girls on to talk about girl stuff and hope that somewhere in the middle there, guys and girls can start meeting each other. Just thinking about it and thinking about you making music and people writing and what, what, how, how do you envisage that us going forward? I would really love to see it going way past us. And I'd like to start. What's me, buddy? I don't want a cookie right now. Too bad. <laughs> Thank you, Ruffy. Or else you eat it. Or else it's in my gut. It goes bye bye. <laughs> You've been told, Gran. You've been told. <laughs> Am I not? Have something sweet. Enjoy life. <laughs> Again, it's it's back to the same thing. These, the young the, with all their energy. I I would love to have these. I like the older dark nights 
and I'd love to have them on, but I, I, I really am looking forward to these younger ones. I, I know Crimson Capsule Kitty can't be that old because she's still talking about having a family. Oh. There's somebody out there actively thinking about having a family. Wow. How interesting that would be to hear that point of view in the middle of darkness, you know? So I, I would love to see it growing beyond just what we're hoping to see and seeing what other people are already doing. Yeah. Bring on these ones that have made these video games and have written these books and are building these things and, and other ones that may not be building anything yet but have the ideas, the interesting ideas and the the writers that have the the humor that is underneath and gosh, we could go so far. I mean, I don't even see an end in view. Like Censorship Sucks has interviewed so many people. He's done it with a different frame of mind mm. but it's the same idea making a community because he's found a lot of people and they're all disparate and they, they all have different stories to tell I'd like to get ours more focused on what these people are, who they are what they've done how how they see the world you know, and just like I said before, like the 15 minutes of fame, bring in more people and to say, look what that guy did. Look what she did. Look what we can build together. And it, I'd love to see it explode with minds because there's so much potential there. Every time I turn on, like, there, I see new people all the time coming to my channel. And some of them I don't know. Some of them are just average people. But there's these ones that shine through, these newer ones. One I don't, I'm not even sure if it's a new channel, but one that has really been encouraging to me, Random Chords and Minor Keys is one. Oh, yes. The Alligator and, Hunter. Yes, but some of the stuff he puts up, he, he mm. has some really deep stuff. And then he'll come on to something I put up and he'll say, that's the spirit or a, a, just a different person, different point of view. And he's, like you said, an alligator. Wow, I mean, everything you could imagine is here. People from, I've seen more people from Africa lately. A lot of people that are coming on here that I think may have been around for a little while, but uh, Sarah Famous is one I've been seeing a lot of. And there's a guy, Ona, I think his channel name is oh, O N A H. Yes, I've seen that. I think I, I have the idea that she was South African. I don't know if that's real. Okay, that's true. Yeah, I'm not sure, I, but both of them have a huge amount of faith that you have put up some beautiful stuff. Mm. Wouldn't it be neat to have people that live in Africa, people that are, uh, there's a couple of people that are in Japan. I, there's so many cool people online, and a lot of them have been interviewed by anybody yet. Oh. You know, they're, oh. yeah, there's some ones that, I saw one, Today or yesterday, you saw me, somebody. He, um, Eric Mar knows him, and I've never had met him before. And he's really interesting. There's, there's no end to the kind of creativity and different. But again, we all have something that draws us together. Oh yes, it, oh, yes. and it was, with you, you, you've been in contact with channels that I don't have contact with, but we do have a lot in common. So we could. You could spring some new ones on me. I don't know. <laughs> and that's something Crimson Capsule Kitty did the other day. She said, basically, I'm getting an echo chamber. Somebody give me a new channel to watch. Yes. So we could do that. Yes. that would They're like, who's out there like me? Yes. 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 And I think that's the whole point. Building a community. Right. You know, building. Even if they're not people that we may end up sticking to. There's so many different groups on Minds, and they all, like you said, there's the gamers, there's the writers, there's the whatever all they do. There's so nations. And I was telling you the other day, I see the differences in these channels. There's some of these huge channels. They post, 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 post huge news stories, all kinds of views, but they never comment on anything. Mm. They just let their channel just, mine is so different. I am a busy channel. I do have a lot of the one word answers and little hearts and stuff. But if somebody comes there and I'm impressed with something about them, something just hits me. This person 
is down or this person is, I'll feel something about them and I'll start talking. And it seems like every time there's somebody who's been wounded, somebody who's been sick, somebody who's had a huge devastating happening event in their life. Peggy too, I think of just reading her stories about her mother. It's been a couple of years and she just bounced back in our life just the other day because mm -hmm. I was in mourning and she said, you and Bob Dub are just fine. You grieve the way you want to. And I remember reading her books, her, her not books, her articles. I think she might have turned it into a book about losing her mother. She had already been there all that time. I remember reading her stories and then I'm going through it and she pops back in. It's, I, that's what I see all the time on minds of these people that I've been encouraged by in the past or maybe I encourage they come back later and it's like, oh, geez, they were there this whole time. But it's, it is building something. There's some people on here that I could talk to for hours. Now with this new chat, I can sit over there with someone and we have these, I call them chat sessions, like kind of what you and I do. They're shorter. Mm -hmm. But that's what my channel's evolved into. It's if I'm having an off day, there's a ton of people that pop in and just dump me with beautiful stuff. But then somebody will hit me someday and I'll I'll see something and what they posted. I'm like, this is happening, isn't it? And I go, yeah, how do you know? It's just like I have this. And that's what it's evolved into. The, you've got the kitty pictures and you've got the, some news and you've got how I feel about faith. But then you get these people that come in and those are what gets me excited. Because... I think I'm doing something for them. And it, like I said with this Peggy lady, I, she'd already been in the past, somebody that, Nathan, somebody that was in the past, they pop back in and it's like, my channel is almost like an online family. I don't know another way to put it. I said tribe before, but when you think about it, it's really like a family. And I know other channels have it. Like Mark has a totally different point of view about his channel. His channel is all about, this is my radio station and these are my comics and this is my war experience. And, and he doesn't, he has his little groups that he talks with, but he's pretty much, this is business. I'm going to go on to the next platform and post my stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm, and I'm like, I'm the, like night and day from you. I'm like, come on, like, let's talk. <laughs> so it's, it's been a, a fun thing because I feel like I'm underneath all these people's wounds that, that pop in on my channel I'm it's like I'm there to be an aid to them but then down the road they could turn around and they they're there for me when I need something mm -hmm. I don't know what else you call that other than a family that sounds very that sounds fun. Very fun. yeah and I know yeah. you've been going through the you've been trying to pull away you're and I was where you are too. I was at that point where I didn't want anybody to get close and I had my walls up and I, I isn't it the Asian way of thinking not to, to not to get attached. I think the attachment thing, really? the Buddhists, really? yeah, they say not to be attached. But I started thinking about that. How boring life is if you don't want anything get you attached to it. And I know there's pain in that. I've, I've had people that I've been really close to on my channel that have up and just walked away and then, you know, the end of it and the end of the story. But there's so many others that they're still out there. And I've got this huge core. It's getting bigger and bigger all the time. Like I said, if I tried to list favorite channels, I'd definitely leave somebody out because there's so many. But these core people keep coming back into it over and over. It's, it's lovely. Wow. It's lovely. Oh gosh, my speakers seem horrible again. Anyway, yeah, it is. It is really lovely. And do you think you were mentioning before about the um, the possibility of there not being an internet? I do think about that. What what would we do down the line if the, if there was an EMP that just blasted the internet out of the whole world? I don't think it would stop. I think there's other ways. I really don't see it completely happening. But if it did, 
look how these people that we talk to are already in this mindset. I think they would find a way if it came. There's ham radios. Like they say, World War Four, World War Three would be played with sticks and stone. There's always going to communicate. Well, at the moment, it looks like biological warfare is the big thing, doesn't it? I mean, if COVID turns out to be a, a an actual, what you call what they call it, biological weapon, actually manufactured that that either was let out or that was leaked, and this is the new way of being, then yeah, the masks aren't going to work. We're going to need to start getting gas masks. We're going to have to start wearing PPE. It's going to be. It's going to be, I don't even know what the word is. <laughs> a different world. Yeah. It's, and so far, at least for me, it's been seeming rather unreal. I, I've known a few people now that I, I've come across some more recently that really had this bug, whatever it is. Mm. It's a coronavirus, but it's obviously something different something that's scary for some people. And even though it's not been much of an effect in my world, there's been a lot of people that have died from it. And the thing that scares me is what they're calling the cure, I think is gonna be bringing a lot more deaths. But I'm not gonna let that take away from what's building this new world. Mm. I don't think whatever they wanna do, I don't think they're gonna take the human spirit out of us. Like I said, here in our county, if we're supposed to be on Monday, we're supposed to be staying in our house, double masking over two years old. Good luck with my county. Good luck with my neighborhood. It's like people are, they've get, it's almost like this pandemic has made this indomitable will in some of us. Like, you're not going to take my world completely away from me. No matter what you do, I'm still going to keep fighting for whatever side you're on, you know, that there's people that think that this vaccine is saving lives, but it's, everybody seems so intent that no matter what, this world can end. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I think it's going to in its present state. That's why I keep seeing the new. I think we're um, whatever's bringing us down, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Things are gonna fall. People are gonna die. That's what happens with change. The thing that's interesting is we don't know where we're changing to. All the way through the 70s and 80s and 90s, there was this huge idea in sort of the public consciousness that we were building the world. And there was that, that and then we got to the whole 2000s, and it's as if everything, everything changed. I just keep on seeing you, uh, when we talked last week, saying we're a community coming together and you putting your hands like this. And that, that picture just goes round and round in my head for this whole week and thinking about what we're going to talk about today. And this idea of community is just so powerful, it transcends all mediums and all, and it must be based in some sort of godly Mm -hmm. attitude or something because you can't build a community without love it's really and whatever the face of love that they choose it it just seems like it's the love that unites us like i guess if you wanted to talk about my channel what i'm trying to provide is some love if we have such a harsh world that we all face my real world isn't very pleasant i'm limited to very small spaces that i can get to but online i can I was telling somebody the other day, I forget, it might have been this Truth to Light, they post a lot of video. It was uh, pictures of foreign countries that mm -hmm. I may never get to see. Mm -hmm. And I can sit here online and look at these beautiful places that I'll probably never go to right here. Mm -hmm. So they provide, they don't even have any idea of some of these channels, what kind of joy they provide other people mm -hmm. to be able to, I, I can't even walk on a beach if I wanted to. I'd have to, my walker would get stuck in the sand. <laughs> but I can look at a beach that somebody else has been to. Uh, Kara Simeon uh, sent me a picture on um, chat. I don't think they'll mind me saying this. They sent me a picture of horses on the beach. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> the thing that I miss in horses, 
I love horses and I yeah. have an the, the pleasures that you can get. And and again, yes, it, it's here in the screen, but I'm seeing in my real world too. You're not yes. where you're at is a different mindset. Yeah. And I can see why New Zealand is the way they are. They're insular, they're small. Mm. It's kind of a nanny state because look what you came from. You know, the you had to deal with the Maori and their troubles and all this. Mm. And you had to come to that with a woman's point of view, I guess. You know, how do you solve all these issues? But over here in the United States, we're in a different situation because we don't like being told what to do over here. We're not, we don't like being nanny stated. Yeah. And it's, it's funny to see uh, like this young man I talked to over in England that they can't even have guns. <laughs> He's an antique dealer. He's got guns anyway. <laughs> I'm just thinking the spirit is everywhere. You know, I was reading a, a person talking to me from Australia. I forget what their channel was, but they're, they live in Australia. And they, I said, do you guys still have guns? Oh, yes, the sporters do. And I'm like, oh, at least somebody still does. And he says, oh, yes, and I'm not giving them up to you. And the guy that's in England, he's like, oh, they tell us we can't shoot. Yeah, but we do it. We go out on the weekends. We're fine. I'll go far, far away. And we do it anyway. It's that indomitable spirit. That's what, And I see that in droves on lines. I, it may be other places, but I see those people that are like, Tell me I can't do something. I'll show you I can. <laughs> That's for sure. It's interesting the situation with guns here in New Zealand. It's I find it fascinating. So I grew up knowing how to kill somebody from the time I could pull the trigger. That's what we were taught to do. And we were never taught to ask questions. We were never taught to challenge. If somebody was walking towards you and they shouldn't be, then that was the only question you needed. So I was very horrified when I got to be a young adult and found out that I had been trained by a system to be a killer without even knowing because I was too young to even know what would have happened to me. Um, that isn't my point. My point is I came from there, from that kind of attitude and an ongoing war into this environment where it's, it is all the woman's point of view and the lovey, lovey, kissy, kissy stuff and it shocked me. It shocked me. It still does. I'm like, what's wrong with you women? Don't you understand what the world is like? You have no idea living here in your happy little sweet island paradise. You have no idea what they are like on the other side of the sea. Mm -hmm. But having met all those things, I then met the hunters. Meet them in the towns. You meet them out on the hunting grounds. And they pack up their car and they put all their stuff in the back of the car. Then they drive to wherever it is. Then they get dressed up and they start putting on this ammo thing and that bayonet thing and this pig sticking knife and this thing down my leg and this thing down my arm. And Oh, my word. And they wear, it's the funniest thing, the hunters. They wear bright orange camo. So right. the, like yeah. high vis, but then with all these sticks, they're sure that the deers can't see orange. Ah. So they say that by wearing orange, they're invisible to the deer. But the but fascinating this, uh, thing is, they're then high vis to each other. So there's a complete different little world that happens in the forests. And I think that the girls are kind of aware of it. They're on their periphery and the boys are going out. But, you know, boys always go out. And I think yeah. the women are happy that they're not going down to the pub and getting drunk. And I don't think that they really kind of figure out that, you know, where the deer comes from. Maybe they think that on the way home that the guys stop in at the shop and buy that, that meat that's made in the factories, you know, that stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I am. We have here right. too. You do? We have hunters here too. Oh yeah, uh, my first husband, his dad was a big hunter. They everything they could get, deer, squirrel, and stuff. And there's people on mines like that too. And they also know how to make deer sausage and deer jerky. And oh my, 
yeah, those hunters, even in the places that are being overrun with this feminine mentality, again, this out of balance thing. Mm -hmm. The women to our side of the world seems to be more out of balance with the male, the male dominated, you'll do because I said so, you know, Jesus. that they're trying to push on us Americans. Mm. And again, it's an out of balance thing. We're so hard on this, but we still have our people that are underneath keeping it stable. You're over there where it's mostly women, but it's almost like everything's being. Okay, you're trying to pull me out of balance. Guess what? We got this group of people here that doesn't go for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That was interesting for me in South Africa. Well, not. I grew up in Rhodesia. And in Rhodesia, it, it was a British colony. So there was very much... a. a, 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 a it's hard to explain. I mean, I suppose you, you get it because you, you America was built at the same time out of European descendants. So it, it's, it's probably a similar colonial thing. And there was, there was the same uh, clash of cultures, the native culture with the immigrant cultures and, and everything. And once again, I've forgotten what I was going to say to you. You were talking about how your country that you came from was all. We we're talking about the differences between a dominated country like male yeah. versus. Maybe that's what I was saying. Talking about these countries where I grew up believing so strongly that men were my protectors and that I was alive because I had soldiers. And by, uh, coming through to the whole woman side and the feminist side and seeing that. And really being able to get on board with the fact that women had been, women's lives had been altered by feminism. And women had been taken out of these rather s subservient roles and had built lives that were, that were wonderful and challenging and stimulating. But then, having discovered that in New Zealand and by coming to New Zealand, the terrible disappointment that I found when I found that this wonderful feminist, idealistic, magnificent movement had become so corrupted. Mm -hmm. And coming back, coming back to the, the, the internet, I suppose, during the trauma of my life, withdrawing, but as I withdrew, drawing closer to another world, again, the male dominated world that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And then finding the male domination here on the internet and realizing that women were missing and hearing the men who'd walked away basically onto the internet to have their own lives saying, okay, so women are awful and they've gone, they're naked and screaming in the streets and we can't cope with them, but we need them. That's the fascinating intersection that I think that we're sitting at at the moment. Such a big concept. It's such what, what's happening and the power that we have to influence other people through our channels on minds. Mm -hmm. I suppose what I'm saying is that I've got here accidentally just through my life and through my life experience. And I'm finding talking to you so fascinating because I'm trying to figure out how to go forward. You know, how, how do we bring this new community together? But like you were saying, I think it's already kind of started. And it's like, as we were saying, it was a male dominated thing. And we're, we've always been talking about the being in the flow, the keeping the circuits open. But you can't do that if there's not a balance, if there's not a way for those different things to like we keep talking I keep using my hand to come back together and I think us being on the internet being the softer side being the woman being the me being the grandma how we just had a bad day come on over to my jail <laughs> you know if you want to have a good day or a bad day you'll definitely feel it over on my channel so they've got their they're, they've done this and they're they're going here and they're doing that. But like you said, they still need us. Like that one young guy, he's like, I'm still wanting to find a wife. I want to have kids. And they're like, how do we get back to it? 
God. because they come over here into the internet, which was their world. And yeah, we women were here, but they weren't really paying that much attention to us. Mm. You know, they, they, they had their own thing, but I'm noticing like on the radio show, they were starting to ask more women on the show. They've, they've gone a little back from that. Now they've got their little core group that they're into right now, but you can see that they were trying new things. They're trying to, how are they going to reach out to somebody else? And you were saying that, that they're all this, this is the news and this is that, and this is this, but we're all over here. Well, I feel this and I think that. <laughs> yes. So they have their thing and we have their, but if we could just bring some, it's okay for them to have their thing in us. We got to just let each other I think I said it before last week. We need to just be more honest about who we are. I'm a woman. I'm, I'm not going to be a man. Mm. But the man's world was all oh, go get them, grab the prize. And I know they think of other things too, but I think they need that balance of us women back in there. And I think they're basically screaming for it. These young ones are like, where's the women? Yes, and I yes. think if we show them that women aren't so scary, then, you know, like, okay, yeah, I'm emotional, but I'm trying to get a hold on it. Mm. You know, you guys, you've already been here. Mm. We're trying mm. to come along beside you. We're not trying to take over your world. That's not what women do. We're, at least my generation wasn't, but we need each other anyway, even though they have their way of doing it we still have to find what's in common we have to and we're not going to create that if we don't have a conversation we don't open the channels you know and if they want to keep a male dominated world there's plenty of room for that on the internet that's what's so wonderful about the internet yes but it yes. does need a balance back it, it's just it's so obvious these guys are they're out there screaming like, "Oh my God, I want to, I want to have this life. I want to have my." But where are the women? And what the hell happened to you, ladies? You know, that's basically what they're saying. We've been out there screaming naked and throwing our bras in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I can live without that. So I think part of our goal is to show guys that we're not so. Yeah, we're more emotional, but we're trying to think and we're trying to mm. to join mm. with you. We don't want to take you over. We don't want to take your world away from you. Yes. My personal viewpoint is to be like a, a hand, you know, like in Jesus' day, he had all those women around. That's the way I see us, you know, we're the, we're the ones that will hang on to every word. We're the grandmas, ours are. But I'm hoping that them getting their confidence back I think a lot of them have lost confidence. They're like, you women, mm. you know, and they don't know how to approach women anymore. I think when they run into us in reality, they're like, oh, what the, whoa, you people are cyclones. <laughs> exactly. And we got to mild ourselves down and, and they need to, <laughs> we need to meet somewhere in the middle. You know, that's, we women need to think more about how guys think and guys need to think more about how we think, but it's more of just being together is what we're forgetting. We've gotten this fantasy. I love the internet, but I do see Justin's point of view that as long as this, he calls it the fantasy world, yeah. as long as this world is here, who's going to be out there creating, but I know otherwise I've seen that and he calls it a crutch in a lot of ways that people aren't doing anything in real life. But honestly, they are. It's like this is the springboard. You, you and I have been healing each other because you were overwhelmed with grief. But you were there when I was overwhelmed with grief. And we pulled each other together a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that we can take that further. Yeah. Heal us. Yeah. And when we're healed, we can help these Especially these young guys, this one's my heart's with that a lot of the older knights that we know, they've had their lives, they've had families, they have families, they have children, grandchildren. It's these young ones, I think of so many of them, the game creator, he's alone, he's not married, 
the young one that kept you company the night, not married. The older ones that I know that aren't married. Mm -hmm. And they're lonely. I, I think really underneath, they're just screaming, I'm lonely. But they don't want to say it out loud. They're like... <laughs> who can you who can you? Who can you, who can you, who can you, stop it, stop it, I've got a noise cancelling, uh -huh. but sometimes it tries to cancel me, 